guys, welcome to Clockwork Dandy Needles for another breakdown of ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead, episode 5. We are back, we had a week delay, but we are here with another fantastic episode. I really enjoyed this episode, there's a lot of really good things I want to talk about. Before we get going, make sure you head on over to check out the Midway Review. It's finally up, I have committed to my top 3 OPs, EDs and current standing of animes. That means we are now halfway through the season. In the last chunk, you're going to have my overview of next season and what I'm breaking down. At the end, you'll have my end of season review where I finally commit, give out some fun awards because I think the awards are amazingly fun to write. I love handing them out and I can't wait to hand out some more. Say goodbye to the season and go in into the next season. So thank you guys so much for continuing your support. You guys are amazing. I've had some fantastic conversations with you guys this season. I'm very excited to break down today's episode. This week, we are going to focus in on Akira's dream of becoming a superhero. He does look a little bit like Deku. Just a tiny bit. I was thinking that he doesn't have a quirk or anything and still defeat and be a hero without having a quirk. They are in a universe where anime does exist. He does seem to have a lot of inspiration for things like Spider-Man. I'm pretty sure the suit is reminiscent of an actual superhero that I'm not aware of. I don't watch too much in the way of superhero movies. Pretty sure somebody will be looking at that suit going, oh, that looks like this person and that person. So you guys will have to let me know if you actually think his suit is based on off of somebody. I do think Kentro looks amazing blonde, apocalypse bleaching to its finest. I can't even find a hairdresser who's willing to help me bleach my hair. It's good to see that even in the apocalypse we are being resourceful using the water tank. We do get a little bit of an update on the worldwide situation. So there are small pockets of resistance in wider Japan. A lot of Japan is just inhabitable and not safe. Rural areas of Japan have become safe havens. Possibility that we might actually have luck because it seems like we are finally Finally departing Tokyo about time that we leave Tokyo and we go somewhere different for the next half of the anime. I did state in the last episode that I thought the scariest addition to our zombie apocalypse was the addition of the zombie dogs. It would seem that animals are also affected and this I think makes this apocalypse even worse. You've got zombie rats, you've got zombie bugs, what about zombie mosquitoes? Mosquitoes are dangerous at the best of times. The fact that they've added animals to the equation makes me think that it really is just a matter of time before everybody is going to turn and there's no cure there's no way out of this the trope of a person always hiding a bike continues this week as we do see a bus full of people who have managed to stay alive all this time but sadly they can't go any further because there's zombies everywhere it does feel really stupid because we already know that there's stuff in the road driving in the road especially in a bus is probably unlikely but during the apocalypse and the initial few days people crashed into things there's cars littering the streets i think the girls said they were on their way to the harbor we do get to catch up with miss risk analysis i'm gonna call her that until the end because we do get her name given to us right at the end the super suit is great i thought it was b movie gold so perhaps it is from a b movie that he is copying maybe we should keep the suit around i know he doesn't want to be a superhero anymore maybe having the suit putting it to good use is great because it seems to deflect bites I have questions, guys. I just have questions about the carrying method of this infection anyway. If it does repel bites, what about the infected saliva that is now on his suit? Kenshiro leaving Akira just to deal with it was brutal and harsh, but I guess that's what a superhero must do. They must sometimes stand all on their own because it does feel like this week we are doing a bit of an analogy on what does it mean to be a superhero, which I like about this anime. This anime seems to pick a theme for an episode and then it would dive bomb into the philosophy behind it. Deep diving all of the conundrums that go with it risk analysis wastes no time she's already looking at the blueprints looking at the building to make sure that she knows where she is trying to find out exactly where this escape routes are i was also waiting for somebody to hide a bite because i predicted that this section would fall apart because somebody was hiding a bite it seems to be the common trope at the moment this time we end up with something even scarier than a zombie bite the argument that missed risk analysis holds no punches when delivering to our boys she does this despite the fact that he saves people Obviously, she does state, I am aware that he saved people. The argument essentially is that putting yourself in danger is selfish because you then don't think about the people that you're leaving behind. You don't think about your friends, your family when you're helping a complete stranger. If you acted like this, if you were to take this argument at face value, you would never have charity, people doing any good. You'd never have people doing an act of goodwill face value obviously there's ways around this most of the people around you are complete strangers if we were in the streets you guys wouldn't know what i look like and i wouldn't know what you guys look like it would be 
sad because if we go by this argument, I can't help you guys or I can't be nice to you guys. I understand where she's coming from. The better mid-ground between both arguments is that you should be able to help somebody if it doesn't put other people at risk. So if you know you can help somebody without it putting yourself at risk, I don't see why not. I don't understand why you wouldn't try to help somebody if it's within your power to do so. If there is a risk involved, that would then come down to you again as a person. I believe that you should have that decision-making skill. If you think that, yep, I want to take that risk, absolutely fine. But it does lead nicely into the argument, what is a hero in most of the modern day movies is they often live quite lonely lives thinking about people like batman small circle of friends or no friends at all thinking about people like spider-man who have lost uncle ben superheroes who have paid a very high price i was trying to go through a lot of the marvel universe ones tony stark he paid with his life at the end superheroes are people who don't always want to be a superhero sometimes these people don't choose to be superheroes they just end up becoming superheroes there's a price to pay maybe you have lost somebody you're on your own that was me thinking about the argument as a whole let's talk about the shark mutation very confused by this zombie mutation i get the fact that they state that maybe he's eaten divers and then he's mutated confusion over this infection as a whole don't have enough information an infection that allows you to sprout human limbs I'm not so sure. I am as equally as confused as everybody in the building is when they see this thing. This risk analysis argument is actually in action when we have a selfish action resulting in a selfish result with the girl who really doesn't want to die. I see her getting more and more upset and panicky where she just throws her under the bus and saves herself. Going over every type of person who would be in apocalypse. You're seeing all sorts of actions that you probably would see people valuing their own lives over other people but irony because it's the exact argument that risk analysis was putting forward she puts herself in danger contradictory to her own argument where she tries to calm the girl down that's what actually gets her tossed under the bus she kind of proves her point i took a chance to help a stranger i then got thrown aside now i'm in danger of being eaten by a shark argument in action you can see why to her that just solidifies i shouldn't have done that this is me trying to be nice see your side of the argument it didn't work out now i'm facing a shark interesting to see that they put the argument actually into play so you could see it happening kira really was being a superhero when he took on the shark it was zombie shark versus man it was a really impressive fight i was actually very impressed how they handled it when she calls his name for the first time that was really nice him really pushing aside reason you don't have to overthink it there doesn't have to sometimes be a reason to why you act what other reason do i need that there's a cute girl in danger and i want to help us you can see both sides of the argument i do like akira's side of the argument because you can just do something for the sake of just doing it if you know that there's no reward or anything but you still choose to do it that's sometimes also equally as admirable as akira says i'm not doing it for a reward most heroes don't do it for rewards they don't often do it for a monetary gift or anything because at that point i think you're just a, a mercenary the guys in the video games who get paid for their actions obviously it depends on what video game you're playing but it does feel like you're going into the lines of being paid to then do something fight itself is really really cool risk analysis actually aiding this is the shark i understand this could be a weakness let's look at the thing that we're facing and see if we can use it to our advantage i also thought electricity would be the obvious way forward because water and electricity don't mix pikachu shocks a water pokemon both injure themselves that was a very obvious answer but it's great to see them both putting their brains together akira not really thinking and having any reason just running around providing a decoy which is great it buys her some time it's not a good episode if kencho doesn't get naked it's now our baseline rating for every single episode that us and i love it and his little addition to helping the guys out let's talk about that electric punch that was absolutely amazing i love the animation at this point because we get a freeze frame it there's a nice circular motion going on it looks great the pose looks amazing him shouting out a very bad name with his attack that's what makes a hero as well having really bad names for your attacks great use of teamwork because everybody gets involved to do their part the end where she ends up parting ways saying that their viewpoints are incompatible i disagree and i have an argument for it she says that they can't work together because she wants to avoid becoming a zombie whilst these guys are simply just doing things before they become a zombie before the inevitable they are not dissimilar in the slightest it is possible these guys also want to continue doing things without becoming zombies because they don't want to be zombies they're just saying that there is a reality that we're probably going to be zombies they're not accepting their fate they're just stating we're going to have a good time whilst avoiding being zombies it's the same argument 
argument. Her argument is I want to avoid being a zombie. Why can't you do fun things at the same time as avoiding being a zombie? She just doesn't want to see them as the same. She sees them as dissimilar. It is a nice ending because she does blush and give her code to them. So we know that her name is Shizuka. But they do part ways. I don't know if they're going to meet again. I think you will meet again because the OP suggests that you're going to meet again. But it would seem now that we are finally departing Tokyo. I do think we're probably going to have better luck outside of the big city. Millions of people live in Tokyo. I don't actually know how many people live in Tokyo. I think it's in the millions. I know I'd rather be away from a hotspot like Tokyo. Where I am right now, rural-ish, but it's still too many people living here. My town itself is like 30k people maybe live here. Still wouldn't want to be here. I probably would also take my car, try get out of the city as best as I can. Fantastic episode. I really like it. I'm glad that it's back. I did miss it for a week and I hope you guys also missed it and you're happy that I'm back. But thank you guys once again for tuning in. Really like this episode. This episode was awesome. Do you think that the two perspectives are really dissimilar? Is it possible that you just can't work with somebody who's having fun at the same time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have fun guys. I will see you guys next week. Bye bye guys.